Billy Punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you are, make it, make it, T T T Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship anchored over the Midwest. Breadbasket, that is. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, uh, you could be doing some of your own scientific experiments like our guest that we're going to introduce shortly. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and if it's not August 15th, 2017, uh, then you're not listening to it live, which means if you call in to the show, you're probably going to get a recording. Now, I still listen to the recording, but you're not going to be able to talk to me live. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery goes something like this. Statistics, the only science that enables different experts using the same figures to draw different conclusions. And that's from Evan Essar. A few announcements before we bring our guest on. And I will do an introduction of our guest because I feel he deserves a somewhat lengthy explanation. The Flat Earth Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina. Please get on the waiting list. If you cannot get on the waiting list or you're having problems or if you really desperately need a t ticket and you want to beg... Uh, don't lie, cheat, or steal. Come to me. Email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. Maybe I can do something. Maybe I can't. But so far, I've been getting some great emails from people saying, I got it. I got through the waiting list. It was fantastic. So go to fe2017.com and try to get on the waiting list because it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, technically, it's already sold out. But you know what? There's going to be a lot of people going all you know, without a reservation. So I highly encourage it. Let's see here, Alabama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a promise. I, I, if anybody's in Alabama and you think you want to meet up with some FE people and you want to speak to people, there is a conference coming up. And the guy you need to talk to is a guy I just interviewed with on uh, Alabama radio station, AM station. His name is Paul. So if you're in Alabama and I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten even gotten to the debate challenge yet, thank you, Peanut Gallery. Good Lord, man. Do you know how many announcements I have? I have a lot. I'm getting to it. So hopefully our guest will stay patient for at least a, a little while longer. The, uh, the, anyway, if you want to speak at an Alabama conference, if you want to get there, meet some people, share some flat earth love, call this guy. His name is Paul. He speaks with a heavy Alabama accent. His number is 
3930. So contact that guy. Subject matter experts, if you would like to speak from a professional standpoint on the flat earth, please give me a shout. You can either call this number or you can email again, msergeant23 at comcast.net. The Jeffrey Gropper debate challenge is still in effect. If you have a big brain and a degree, a master's degree in some sort of physical science, contact me. I will try to set you up with Jeffrey Grupp, although to be honest, I have not talked to him in months now because no one's willing to step up to the plate because all you heavy scientific types, you suck. Sorry, had to say that. Big money challenge is still in effect, though. You want to get involved in that, contact Kathy Dunson at perelandra77 at gmail.com. That is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. A couple more, real quick. Uh, DITRH is doing a billboard. It's going up near the conference center for the Raleigh, North Carolina thing. You can find out more about it at a GoFundMe called A Stranger's Guide to FE Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November. It's going to be a printed billboard, and we can send people to stand under it with FE signs when we are there. His words, not mine. Special thank you after I attended, I know it's been a little while, after I attended the Atlanta Global versus Flat Earth.com debate. It was the summer 2017 conference. It was held uh, August 5th and 6th, and the debaters were Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. It went very, very well. You guys could, should check that out. Zen is also on this network, Zen Garcia, uh, from Seek Us Revealed, and everyone did there did a fantastic job, and I, I was, it was a blast to do. A pain in the ass to get to there. Easy to get back. Met a lot of great flat earthers, though. The place was sold out. It was fantastic. Also, Peanut Gallery says, defend the 33th shirt. Yes, I should also mention that shortly after the Atlanta conference, I came home and then heads right back down to a Seattle meetup. Seattle Flat Earth, flat Earth meetup, which was down at the Pyramid Brewery next to Safeco Field. I was there with Patricia Steer and Dee Marble and Paul on the Plane. And many other fun and interesting people. And yes, I did wear one of the Peanut Gallery special shirts. It was purchased and sent to me by a fellow flat earthers. And you otherwise know him as Zulu One. And it was a flat earth fire department shirt with engine number 33 gasp on the front. And uh, keep back eight inches per mile squared on the back. I don't know what that means, though. I heard it before somewhere. Anyway, so a lot of people saw that in the people's videos. There were a, lot, a lot of people were streaming during the Seattle meetup. And look, I showed this shirt on Patricia Steer's show. So people, you should have seen this coming. It was supposed to be funny, and everybody thought I was trying to be clever, sneaking in there with a 33 on my shirt. Okay, first, I didn't custom order the shirt. Someone else did for me, but I was proud to wear it because it's a cool shirt. And I may just autograph it and give it away at the next meetup I go to. Just to let you know. Mostly because it's, it's a size too small. I could get away with it because it hadn't been washed yet, but after it was washed, whew, a little tight. I'd have to wear that thing with a hoodie over it. Anyway. Okay, last but not least, let's get rid of that. Sorry, I'm trying to clear out my stuff. The announcements just keep getting longer and longer. Uh, last but not least, the uh, Rob, Bob Skiba and Amber Plaster are going to be doing the Take on the World 17.com. That's September 15th through the 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. For more information on that, other than TakeOnTheWorld17.com, please contact Chris Bailey. His phone number is 440-668-6373. And I will be using that one pretty much every week until that stops. So, that being said, and I'll unmute him just so he knows we're getting close. Because once I unclick it. So, we have a special guest tonight. Thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome, and I want I want, I want to spell it out for you who this guy is. All right, uh, I I recently mirrored some of his videos. I recently was introduced to his channel. It's a small channel so far, and his name is Roland Reddy. R O L A N space R E D D Y, and we're gonna we're gonna talk to him. He is currently, if I'm not mistaken, he'll have to correct me as we're going along here. A globalist, but he's also known as a redneck rocket scientist. Now, I hey, compare. Well, yeah. <laughs> I compared I him. 
hang on, hang on. Don't, don't, don't get all uh, hot and heavy yet. I compare him personally to Sasha Baron Cohen. Now, a lot of people don't know who that is, Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, unless you're in the entertainment industry, you might not. Although you may know him as different characters like Ali G, Borat, Bruno, and Admiral General Aladdin. What? A lot of people that were interviewed by these characters still to this day do not know that his real name was actually Sasha Baron Cohen. A lot of people don't know. I mean, literally, I'm, in fact, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure that Ali G intru- uh, interviewed Buzz Aldrin, if I'm not mistaken. So that's how I, that's how I kind of look at Roland Reddy. He is a fantastic character. I like him. I trust him. And you should trust me because I have a secret. I know who he is. And you don't. That's why you're nervous. That's why I got a whole bunch of flack. Well, I, haven't had, I haven't had people unsubscribe because I, I put this man on. But you know what? I'm not backing down from this. He's a great character. I'm going to open up the phone lines after the first break, so you can't call right now. But just to let you know, if you call in and you're mean, I mean, this, this call system has caller ID, so I'm just going to note your number and then you'll never get in again. But remember, I know something you don't in this case, and that's part of the mystery. But we need to know more about this guy. I love the Roland Reddy character. I love the man. I think he's talented. I think he's reckless. And I think he has a lot of potential. Even though currently he's a globalist, I think this is a man on the beginning of a journey. A journey that could lead him into places even he did not expect. But more than that, more importantly, and then we'll finally get to bring him on now. More importantly, he did something that nobody in the Flat Earth community could pull off. And that was, he got face-to-face with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And if you think I'm kidding... You can go to his site. He's there. He did it without scheduling. He did it without booking. He did it without, without talking to secretaries. He just went out there, decided he was going to talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he did it. And Neil didn't shoot him down, which is amazing. Nope. I you got to respect the man for that. So we're going to find out everything there is to know about, one, the, the meeting with, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, the man in general. And uh, anything we want to talk about. And as, as you're listening to this, remember, starting the second segment or maybe halfway into the second segment, we're going to open up the fun lines. You want to ask rolling questions, you go right ahead. And I will not necessarily defend him, depending on the, the questions. I still see him as a potential threat. But I don't know. I, I'm kind of softening to the man. Anyway, with all that being said, R-O-L-A-N-R-E-D-D-Y. How are you, my man? Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that everybody knows I am not Borat. <laughs> Let's get that clear. And uh, second of all, uh, was that hypnosis? Because uh, what? Do you, all right. First of all, we're doing a we're doing a pilot for a show, and um, we needed to ask a question to somebody that knows about space about flammable substances okay uh-huh and um long story short uh neil degrasse tyson was going to be in the area we were doing a couple uh explosion things that we have to do at a racetrack because we can't do them out in the general public guy had permits and he shows up uh and i didn't even know about it the the, the folks that are behind the production side basically came to me and said hey do you want to uh maybe go crash this this uh, this guy showing up and i'm like who is it <laughs> And they're like, it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I'm like, I know that name. And then my buddy told me, he's like, he's, he's kind of like Lando Calrissian. And I said, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Lando what? So I, right away, Calrissian, the guy from the... Uh, oh, Star right, right. Movie. The guy the guy from Star Wars. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, Lando Calrissian. He said that he's, he's kind of like him. Like, he's a real smart guy, you know? I'm like, okay, well, Neil, uh, Neil's not, I don't know. Really, I've seen them once they showed me on Google, and then I watch a couple of the things, and then, of course, I had to act like, you know, he, he's a cool thing ever since Pockets. But uh, long story short, um, yeah, we stood outside for like an hour and 45 minutes in the cold, and uh, 
he finally showed up. I was about ready to call it, call it a day, man. I was tired. So anyway, when he showed up, I just asked him flat out. I said, hey, man, you got 25 seconds to talk to a redneck rocket scientist. And he was like, he started laughing. And then he came over and shook my hand. And, and we started talking, man. And, I, you know, and I, I asked him about the flat earth thing because I, I really got to be honest, man. I thought this was a big joke. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought this whole thing was, a, I thought it was a big joke. And I'm like, what in the world are these people talking about? And then I put the video up uh, for the guy. Cause when I saw the flat earth conference, man, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I started thinking about everything, you know, I, I learned in school and there's a lot of things that we, we looked at, uh, you know, as kids and uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I've seen things, I've seen things in the sky and, Everybody's seen things, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but, you know, I've seen things that look like a UFO or something. So, you know, you can call me crazy for that. I don't care. I, but I know, it, I know it wasn't a person flying around on a, on a hang glider with a flare on it or something. <laughs> but, you know, what I saw was what I saw. And I can't, I can't hold anybody responsible for what I've seen, and nobody can uh, tell me that they've worn my shoes because I still got them on my feet. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but people have accused me of being a... Uh, Pete Santilli uh, or Santilli or whatever. His San, name is. Pete, Pete Santilli. And, uh, I didn't even San... know who that was until today. By the way, I actually had to look that up. And I got to, uh, I got to admit, when he's wearing the bandana and I, and he's he's not shaving real well, it's pretty. It's not not too far off. Well, have you ever been on a construction site, man? <laughs> they all look like that. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> What the world is going on here, man? I mean, I got a dude that has been like, I, I don't want to say he's like cyber stalking me, but he like, he won't give up. I'm like, dude, I just made you a video where I'm sitting here in my, you know, buddy's little studio thing and I'm on a camera and I'm making you a video, just having fun, like making you realize like how silly you are. I mean, people may, they've said some awful things about me, number one, number two. They don't know anything about me. They they don't know how long I've done stunt driving. How, they don't know how long I spent time in uh, Los Angeles. They don't know how long I've done other things in my whole life. But I've never been the front man. That's the thing. And so now I get in front of a microphone and a camera, and and the first thing out of the gate is I'm accused of being in the CIA. And I'm going, what in the world is going on here? And I start thinking, I'm like, my buddies are all playing a joke on me. This is a big joke. Right. And then. And they're like, no, man, there's flat earth people out there. And I'm like, what? Now, you got to remember, man, this goes all the way back into January. Sure. Like, all the way back into January is when we, we started taping stuff, you know, and sitting yeah. down with a couple of riders. And I'm like, I can't do something that I'm not, man, first of all. Like, if you guys want to do some fun stuff, just, you know, give me, let's do a selfie stick and you guys come on along, you know? Right. So it is what it is, man. And, and like I said, it's like, man, you talk about people getting vicious. Seriously, I'd rather get in a in a fifty gallon drum filled with rattlesnakes that have been uh, they had tequila poured on their head or something, you know, <laughs> than than deal with some of these folks. I mean, I'm you think I'm kidding? Man? I've had somebody uh, offer to punch me in the face. Uh, somebody they basically told me I should die. They they proclaimed I'm a Illuminati member. Whatever. Amazing. Well, you know, the, the conspiracy crowd is a suspicious bunch n- naturally. You know, they're, they're suspicious of everything. I, uh, they, uh, I've had people come well, after I me. It. I get it, man. I don't believe JFK. I don't believe, uh, I, I do. I'm not, I mean, I don't believe JFK was killed the way that the official story goes. I get that. Right. I've seen some things on nine 11, you know, whatever, uh, right. you know, you go down, you go down all kinds of rabbit holes, but man, all of a sudden I'm thrown into it. Like literally I've been thrown into it. Like there are people that truly believe that I've been working for the CIA. And I just think it's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm worried about you folks. (laughs) Well, again, again, you got to understand it. It's weird because the, the flat earth is is, Mm -hmm. flat earth theory, the flat earth conspiracy, the flat earth community is real. You know, it's much more lighthearted than any any other conspiracy. And I kind of realized that a year in where I, 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 it all of a sudden occurred to me. It's like, you know what? The conspiracy crowd, they don't really do comedy the way that other people do comedy, you know, they, they like their conspiracies dark, like uh, Heath Ledger in Batman before he died, that, that sort of thing. And so, but the flat earth's not like that. And so when, when somebody else, you know, when someone comes into it, they just have a, they have a hard time. They, they don't know what to do. It's new, you know, and people fear what they don't understand. And so when I saw you come out 
I saw it. But then again, I'm I'm a big uh, big guy on plots. I I love uh, reading. I love a good plot line, and I I knew exactly what was going on there. Well, I, you know, it, you're you're solid. It, I it, I absolutely it, know what's it, going. It, Go ahead. Well, yeah, I know, and that the whole thing is, is people got to understand. Sometimes, you know, uh, a TV show can take you on a journey, and you don't you don't see the uh, you don't see the destination coming up that that you end up in. You know, there you, you go. Like, Whoa, that just kind of flipped me like a pancake. You know. There and, you go. Uh, and and so, certain- you know, the real story, the real story is, is sometimes, you know, you live through, you go through life and, and, and you don't realize when you end up in somebody else's story, you know, you, we all right. cross paths for certain reasons. And, and I don't believe in accidents, man. If I believe in accidents, I wouldn't, I would never do stunts. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh yeah. I, I know exactly what you're saying. If and, I, if you- I believe that, 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 you know, my, yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, go ahead. Let me, let me, let me throw this out there. It, certain personality types, you know, people love the character, and uh, you know, not, not, not But I got to mention this, and that is, look, a lot. I, I hated, for example, Ali G. I hated that character. I, I, it was a terrible character, and yet, this guy was asked to speak at a commencement ceremony at Harvard, Harvard, as Ali G, not as himself. Oh no, no, they could have cared less about the man. They wanted the character. And so it's like, look, certain oh, wait, personality. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that Ali G is a character? <laughs> this is this is going to go down the Simpsons road, is it? De- <laughs> Lisa, you're telling me, or or, or at least with Lisa was talking to Homer, <laughs> and she goes, "Look, pork chops, sausage, and bacon. That's all the same animal." And and Homer goes, "Oh, sure, Lisa, some wonderful magical animal." <laughs> So yeah, Ali, sure. Ali G, well, uh, Borat, uh, and and uh, the general—they're all the same. They're all the same guy, but they're all characters. Huh? I know, right? But all anyway, right. The, the point is, the what I was getting at is the right. personality is what opened the doors. Sasha, Sasha Cohen, pff, Harvard could care less about him. Ali G, pff, he gets a red, he gets a red carpet right up to the stage, and he's talking to Harvard grads. What the hell? Why did so, they? Why did they have him come over there? I have no idea. They why thought he him? was. They thought he was funny. No idea. Huh. No idea. I'm not kidding you. He it he it kills me when like yeah when when Ollie was interviewing when he was interviewing Buzz Aldrin, Buzz had no idea what he was doing. It's like he did because you don't know, and that's that's the mystery. That's the hook. That's the great stuff you can do. You know, if you create. I'm sorry an alias as it were you can get away with a lot you can do a whole bunch anyway so r- real quick so you waited out just so i know here you know because people don't think this is new this the the footage that was shot of you talking neil De- neil degrasse that was in the cold that was a while ago that was back in i believe it was march because it was if you look it's on the march e on the video uh-huh and it says he's, he's like neil degrasse cops in here tonight right you know, like in the neon lights right and that man, so and that man, as you know, there. that was the date. He was there, right on. As as you know, that man, uh, yeah. NDT, he tours. He tours the country. He does that all the time. That is his job. He goes in front of large groups and talks about the wonders of the universe, sort of like a glorified glorified uh, Carl Sagan, only more like Bill Cosby and Sinbad. Oh uh, well, I, see, we didn't go. I didn't go to the show, man. We were there. We shot. We got a. We got some good stuff. We were going all over the, the place that day, and uh, we were, we went to a place called the Studebaker Museum. Remember yeah. the Studebaker cars? Right. Uh, well, they they got trucks in there and everything, man. Like it's, it's it's a really cool museum. That's where we were at that day, and then we ended up going over there. We ended up going over to where Neil was because they knew he was going to have to show up sooner or later. So we got there about an hour and forty five minutes for a show and waited for him. That's how we that's how we got to know who he was, and he was that's a gentleman all- talking to us and. You know, and I know people wish he was dead or whatever. I've read a bunch of stuff here recently. Or once that video went up, my oh, gosh. So, anyway. And again, I, it's got uh, I just, some I'm of it's like, got to wow, be jealousy. Man, this guy is hated. Well, so, well, the, the, you know what it is, man. You know, mm. you know what I think it is. What? If people disagree with somebody, and they're in a higher level, like or like when I say higher level, I'm talking about like they get more people to view them, like on the whole uh, Twitter thing and uh, Facebook and all that. Yeah, YouTube or whatever, you know, or, or or you have your own TV show like this guy has, 
Right. You know, people, obviously, that guy's going to get a lot more people hating him. And he might have a lot of people loving him, but you're going to see a lot more people hating him just because he's on a bigger level. Right. So I look at it like that, like, no matter what, he's on a higher platform than just, you know, my little YouTube channel, whatever. But, man, I just because I talk to a guy, people hate me. Yeah. That's I, I, just well, because let, I talk let, to them, they, they don't even know why we talk to them, you know. They don't uh, even know I, why we were there to talk to them. They think. They think there's some grand conspiracy that we're trying to make flat earthers look stupid. And I've never proclaimed to be a flat earther. Right, number one. Right. Number two, when, when you see the globe, there's a scene in the teaser where I'm, I'm flipping it through a globe. And mm -hmm. somebody asked me, yeah, so you're trying, to, you're trying to make it look like you're questioning. I'm going, hold on a second. We were doing that because of the questions we were about to ask Neil about flammable substances in space. Right. That's why we talked to Neil. But I did I did bring up the flat earth thing because when I was looking up Neil's stuff on Google and they were like, Here's the guy we're gonna go talk to him, like, Well give me you know, I need like a half an hour at least to look some stuff up and some of the stuff that came up immediately was it was about flat earth versus uh, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson. It was crazy. I'm like, What is this? <laughs> and that's how I got introduced to it. Now that was that was back, you know, the, the day we shot. So all that hit me at the same time, and I even I even asked him. I'm, I'm like, "Did you know there's a flight earth conference, man? Like, would you go crash something like that?" And you know, you have to hear what he has to say. That's going to be in the show. I'm not allowed to say all that, you know. Nice. Hey, but I, I can tell you this: what? The, the the things I've looked at, uh -huh. the producers have told me to shut up, uh -huh. like be quiet, like don't talk about it. You know, we don't want to hear it. So. Sure. It's man, you get you get hate on both sides of it because I just uh -huh. said a couple things. I'm like, wow, look at this. Like hey, sure. we're we're going to break here in about 30 seconds, but I want to um, mention real quick that we are going to try to take calls. Once we come back from the break, if you guys don't know the phone number already, you can either call 720-897-6111 or you can call 213-233-3998. Uh, and we already have some guy on hold, but we're not going to pick him up until later. So uh, hang tough. And real quick, before we, as, as we're going to break, tell me as we're going to break, were you kind of starstruck? When he came over and shook your hand, you got 10 seconds. Uh, no, because we all bleed red, bro. <laughs> nice. All right, we'll be back in three minutes. Hang tough, guys. You're not going to be on mute, by the way. Okay. We are TFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Frequency Radio. Welcome back to like Strange that. World, where the truth is often stranger in fiction. I'm your host, and this is part two of four, and we're going to pick up some calls, and we do have the calls stacked up. But I want to mention real quick, just in, on a side note, a little, little trivia thing I found interesting about Sasha Cohen was that his idol before him, because he's a British actor, his idol was Peter Sellers. And Peter Sellers, the, my, the, the finest example of Peter Sellers' work, in my opinion, was Dr. Strangelove, where he literally played three roles in the same movie. And this was back in the day before, you know, we did all the CGI stuff. And he played a, a British Air Force captain. He played the president of the United States. And he played Dr. Strangelove. All in the same movie. All completely different characters. All brilliant. And he inspired Sasha, who inspired other people. Anyway, enough about Sasha Cohen. I don't actually like Sasha's stuff, but I think he's an interesting guy. Anyway, we are on with Roland Reddy. That's R-O-L-A-N space R-E-D-D-Y. He's got a YouTube channel. I highly uh, recommend that you go see it because it's kind of fun. And, oh, wait, I have a quote from the peanut gallery real quick for you. You can't fight in here. <laughs> it's the war room. That's from Dr. Strangelove. That's fantastic. Uh, Roland, are you there? Uh, yeah, 
Cool. You know what? There's there's a, there's some people that's been holding. So let's uh, let's pick up the phones and see what's going on. Uh, as you know, and, and just you guys know, if you, if if you come on and you be mean for any reason, I mean, you know, be constructive, because I, I like a constructive room. And honestly, I'm dying to use the disconnect button and the mute button. I got all sorts of switches on this new setup, and don't make me use it on you, because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. All right, fix, first one we're going to pick up is 520 area code. There we go. 520 area code. Are you there? You're on live with Strange World and rolling ready. Hi, Mark. I'm, we, we've talked before. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just trying. I'm trying to let rolling ready know I'm, I'm the guy that challenged him on who he was. On your channel. Really? Yes. I'm the guy that called him Pete Santilli. Oh. All right. Do you still do you still think he's he's Pete Santilli? I know he is Pete oh. Santilli. Oh, is there it, wait a minute. You, 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 wait, wait, I'm sorry. Did you, I, I don't think, Mark. I know he is Pete Santilli. Oh. I'm being friendly, I'm being nice. Please what if what if I told off. you? What if I told you I well I bet you real money, but you know I don't want to get out personal information or anything like that. I can I can counter that, and I can absolutely say he is not, because I know who he is. Pete Santilli though is not a bad guess. I mean, I looked up honestly. I didn't know who Pete Santilli was uh, until this morning. I, I mean, uh, uh, unless Pete Santilli is not Pete Santilli, <laughs> then you, you might have a point there. Because, you know, even he was a shady character. So, I mean, you might have a point there. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, I know that guy. I know RR is. If you take those fake teeth out of his mouth <laughs> and you put that Hitler mustache on him, he's Pete Santel. <laughs> I mean, the Pete Santilli that everybody knows. <laughs> wow. See, see, see how he's cracking up? He, he can't. He, I'm he, cracking up, man. Can't I can't it. help it because he, you should, you're right. I can't help it. But I, I, I'd, I have don't... To go to a, I'd have to go to a, I'd have, first of all, hold on a second. Did y'all not realize I put a video out showing you that I'm not Pete Santilli? No, it's true. no, I didn't. I didn't watch. I didn't watch that. But you know, me and you are the first. We, well, we argued about it when it first came on Mark's channel. I didn't argue nothing. You're, just, you're talking to the guy that first threw this in your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I'm that is. guy that threw is this it? in your face when Mark first brought this on the okay. channel. That's okay. Well, here, let, 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 let me explain something. You just told me that you didn't see the reply video, so you're trying to tell me to take my fake teeth out, which would require me to go to the dentist and have to start cutting some gums. You ever no, put, I you remember we were talking about. I, I'm, I'm, we, we, we went back and forth, and you were talking about, oh, I got real dental issues going on, and I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> Anybody can say that. But when somebody right. becoming that's a why crisis you watch actor, the other video. I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's let's do this because unfortunately I, we've got a whole <laughs> bunch of calls behind him. Um, right, he right. did he did Roland did make a response video. It's on his channel. It's called "I Am Not Pete Santilli." Literally, although he spelled <laughs> Santilli with a whole <laughs> bunch of L's. And uh, so check it out when you get a chance. He also did a little um, lip syncing to uh, "I Some Somebody's Watching Me" by. Um, Oh crap! Who sung that? <laughs> Rockwell. That was Rockwell. Rock, rock, Rockwell. Ding, ding, ding. Rockwell. So check that out when you get a chance, and then you know what? I may have him on that later as yeah. and and we'll we'll don't worry we'll we'll get to the bottom of this eventually. I appreciate your suspicion though. Hey, wait, right? I got a I got an idea. I got an idea. Okay, I, I, idea. I, I will. Mark, you find, where, wait. Go ahead. Hey, Bo. What, what, wait. Let me ask him a question real quick. Can you get a hold of Pete Santilli? That's the point. You can't. Like I said, he's the. Can I say this real quick, Mark? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Pete Last Santilli, thing. Pete Santilli is the only person caught up in the Bundy Ranch 
debacle oh. that has never been recorded on YouTube being in prison. Like all the people in the Bundy Ranch debacle are all over YouTube with with recordings. And okay. you know, so he got away like a big boy. Huh? He got away like the Duke boys every time then. He got away like the, like the, like no, the Dukes no, ahead. Nobody yeah. can prove yeah. he's in prison. Right. No, nobody can prove he's there. All right, all right. So I, I completely he, hear he's, you. He's, he's not ah, in prison. I see what you're saying. I, got, right. I see what you're saying now. So there's no like, you can't even write a reckless guy a letter in prison is what you're saying. You all can't right. write a letter. Like nobody knows. Like, he he right, was the right. most don't famous know what person out of the Bundy debacle. Okay. And there's no all record right. of him being in prison. Okay, let's do all this. All the other Bundys yeah. and the people arrested <laughs> Got it. have prison phone calls with, you know, activists on YouTube, except for Pete Santilli. He right. just... Well, here's, he here's, what I, here's what I'll tell you. Evaporated here's what into... I hope maybe somebody out there here, hold on. Maybe somebody out there can find out the truth about where he's at. And then what you guys need to do is find out where he's at. Somebody pay for me to go interview him face to face, bring your cameras, bring whatever you want. And also bring what, 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 you, 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 right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. We got, uh, really killing me. Yeah, I was going to say, you get Pete Santilli, you get Pete Santilli and I in the same room after uh, reading some of the stuff that, that I heard about him, and I'll tell you right now, I will take him down in a pillow fight wearing roller skates. How's that? <laughs> and you can, you can, if, if you get it... You look like if, a if twin you brother. It, you you, you, you right. can get him in the prison. All right, okay. One, we, got a, we got a recorded vote then we'll for one, one for Pete Santilli. We're going to move on to the next call, but thank you, thank you for All letting right, me... Mark, let thanks out. for taking my call, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Good talking to you, man. All right. Uh, next call we're going to pick funny. up is from Beverly see Hills. What I'm saying, though, man? Hey, I do. I totally you, understand. You see, you see what I'm saying? I do. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> You're saying twilight. something. It's like Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Pete, Pete Santilli. Interesting choice. All right, let's see what Beverly Hills, California's got to say. Here we go. And then we're going to go after, um, I think, Warren, Michigan. So here we go. Beverly Hills, Warren. California. You are on right now a Strange World. Make sure to turn down your radio. Hey Mark, can you hear me okay? I can. A little, little fuzzy, but that's okay. What's I, up? I, I called it before my name. Roll your window up. <laughs> oh, no. So is is Roland um is is Roland one of the guys who put a uh, who is Roland one of the guys who put the uh, uh, camera on a rocket? No. 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 Not yet. As far as I as no, far as I know. Good? No. Thanks for the idea. That's a great. That's a good idea, though. So, Rowan, you don't know about the, the, the cameras that they put on the rocket that, that hit something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you don't I'm know? sorry. Go ahead, Roland. Go ahead. They all hit something. They, well, they all hit something. Yeah, so isn't that enough don't right they? there? I mean, what more do you need? Well, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is some of, them hit the, some of them hit the water. Some of them hit the ground. <laughs> no, I'm what, saying, what upper, I mean, no, I'm saying that the, the recent amateur footage that's gone up, with, that shows... Rockets that go up so high and then they just hit something and then just start floating back down, or they're not even damaged when they hit the thing. Oh, are you talking about when the camera spins real high, real fast? Are you are you talking about the one the video where the camera spins real fast and all of a sudden it stops? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Okay, that, that's one of okay, them. But there well, are others. of all, too, but it's just really weird. Is, isn't there something? Isn't there something in a rocket that when you get so high that they actually have a a type of thing that releases inside like a spring and that it will, it will literally, it's like a break and it will stop the momentum of that. Uh, I, have, in an I, th I think you might be confusing that with retro boosters, but usually that's in re-entry when it's coming into the atmosphere. I don't think there's actually a spring no, system. To, you, it's, it, I don't know if it's a spring or what it is, but look, look it up. There's a, there's a something inside rockets well, that they can make. Well, I have a stop. question for you then. Wait, I have a question for you. Why, why can't you just send a rocket up and just keep going up and up and up and up till you go to space? Why can't anyone do that? Mm -hmm. Any amateur person? Why? Why is that so hard? What happens once you get up to the thermosphere or whatever the hell? What happens once you get up 
to the atmosphere? Does the rocket burn up or does it just keep going? Like, I'm, I'm just saying one of those rockets that they've been doing the amateur ones with, just one of those kinds. Not like one that a person's on. I'm just saying, you know, just any. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Running. Yeah, like a, like a model what? rocket. Like a yeah, whatever. But yeah. What happens at a certain point? Does something happen at a certain point? Or does it just keep going out into space? Apparently. Like what happens when uh, you send the rocket? Well, see, don't they put like a honing device on them so they know where they're at? Like what I'm saying is like, it's like what would have happened to that rocket from the footage that we saw? What would have happened to that rocket had it not hit whatever it hit or whatever happened? What would have, what should have happened if it just should have just have kept going into space? I mean, I'm sure Mark knows. I really, I really just want to talk to Mark. That's why I called. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I know what you're saying, man. You, uh, we, we don't have any footage. There is literally no footage of any rocket of it, from any country that takes off from the p- the pad with the camera still running and leaves Earth. It's never happened in the is history. Is it because amateurs don't have don't have enough firepower to get up that high? Is that what's going on? Well, amateurs supposedly don't, but Probably that's permits. interesting because Probably permits. So then that means every amateur rocket ever has hit a dome. They just haven't had cameras on them until recently. So we can until actually recently, well, yeah, it's up, up, you, you have a point. Until recently, cameras haven't been cheap enough. I mean, for God's sakes, you can get a 4K camera yeah. in a box box of cereal now. Like those footage, that footage I do you have a question. Those guys setting it. Yeah, I have so. a question. What is it? Really? Why don't they do any lapse of time? Why, why don't they do any lapse time video and release a, uh, the footage of the like on top of the rocket facing straight up? I ain't never seen no camera angle of a rocket going straight up and have that thing going scream. I mean, could you imagine seeing that? Like you're going up towards the clouds oh, and you see like blue and white, and all of a sudden you hit the you hit the cloud like wow, man! Put that on like that. Uh, uh, Put that on like an IMAX, man. The the Put peanut that gallery know, also. Well, it, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, the peanut Even gallery the also wants to, also wants to chime in and say, remember that the, at 250 miles up, the 80 percent gravity is still in effect, according to mainstream science. According to them, anyway. I don't believe it. Oh, okay. But. but that means every single amateur who sends a rocket up should be able to just send their rocket into space. Why not? What's hmm. the big deal? Why can't every is, or is that what they think is happening when they're sending the or are they well? What are you it? saying? Uh, are, you mean, saying what the thing, are you saying? Are you saying? Don't do that. They got to have enough fuel to get there, man. You ain't oh, so it comes down to that, that, that the amateurs space, don't have. Oh, oh, oh! You're saying it's because don't they get them? They get them back, man. Don't have enough fuel. Oh, they do. Well, I I don't think they get enough. I don't think amateurs have enough fuel to punch anything up there. Because if you if oh, you have an amateur here's my here's here's my what? here's my theory on that you ready here's what I think yeah, so what you got I think the bigger the bottle rocket the bigger the bottle rocket the higher it goes <laughs> that makes sense the but, bigger the bottle but, rocket like oh man I don't know what I'm trying to say so if you made a bottle rocket you know like like a hundred feet tall it has a chance. That'd be cool. That'd be yeah, great, man. Be... Have one connected to a telephone pole. But it, That'd be a it big seems like such an obvious thing that should be done every single day. I mean, how hard can that be? And and also, Mark, you know that footage that we were talking about? That right. footage we were talking about that, that supposedly hit something, uh, they had a few different cameras on it, but they, it seemed like they, they, they didn't bother to put a camera just facing the top. Is there a reason why they wouldn't do that if it's actual authentic That's amateur, what I'm saying, man. no-nonsense no footage? That's what I want. I don't know why they don't ever put one on top of the rocket. You're absolutely right. I Yeah, what it, the heck is up with that? Yeah, uh, good point. It's the easiest thing ever. I know. I know. Oh, trust me, man. I I get mad every time. I, I've I've even been going through some of the old NASA archives where they'll put cameras, you know, even you know back in the old days when the cameras were big, cameras on the first and second stage and not on the third stage. So all of a sudden the camera just starts mm-hmm. floating back down to earth with the second stage. I'm going, why in the world would you leave it on the second stage? Why? Why don't you right, put it on the right. third stage? Because we have no, we literally have no footage. Anyway, man, I, I hate to do this to you, but we, I still, there's a couple more calls I want to get in before the break. Uh, any, I, I, you're doing fine. You're doing good. By the way, what are you doing out in Beverly Hills right now? I'm so I've been, I'm born and raised here. Wow. A whole lot. Silver Spoon. Type what, of wait, thing? what high school did you go to, man? I used to, I used to run around. <laughs> my my parents own a lot of property around here. I went to Beverly Hills High School. I'll be damned. So the rumors Class are true. It's not just a television show. Class of 2005. Hey, you know where Zuma Beach is? 
You know yeah. what Zuma Beach is? Yeah. Where I learned to surf. Oh, cool, yeah, man. That's yeah, where I we stopped, do, we man. Do a lot of surfing. It's rocky, <laughs> though. You got to be got to be careful. Hey, did those so guys how expect far are you their from, rocket to go up into space? To Scott? go up into space? I'm sorry. Say say it again. Did those guys expect their rocket to go up into space? The, the amateur footage we saw. Do you think? Uh, no, because they were going for the record, and the record with them, I think, it was less than seventy miles. Because remember, they also think going, about this. Wait, wait, wait those. Oh. If wow. if you try to build a rocket, here's where it gets a little dicey. You can build an amateur rocket, but when it gets to be a certain size. Then the military starts taking an interest in it because what's the difference between you sending a rocket up that can go 200, 300 miles and you sending a rocket up that has some nice little explosives at the top of it? It's, right, it, but then, how would they have to, how would they know? I don't know. Well, that's just it. They, they kind of monitor that stuff. <laughs> they, they, they don't, on that they don't note, let on just that anybody note, build something. That is not a case where, Wow. Oh, sorry. I was going to say on that note, Mark, that is not a situation where you want to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> because they, they get kind of mad about that sort of thing. I mean, look at like, not not to go into current yeah. events, but look, the Korea once the Koreans figured out they could launch a rocket over a certain distance, all of a sudden everyone starts getting all fidgety. So anyway, Beverly Hills, love <laughs> talking you. to you, but I got, I got to pick up some more calls. Thank, Thank you. you and call again. All right. I will. Thanks, man. All right. Have a good night. Okay, we're going to go to a very patient person out of 586 area code. Here we go. 586, thank you for waiting on the line. You are on with Strange World and Roland Ready, otherwise known as Redneck Rocket Scientist. What's up? Hey, Mark. Mark, thanks for having me, man. This is Charlie yeah. from Ann Arbor. I've called in a couple times. Cool. Um, up? Just Two, two quick questions, man. So up here in Michigan um, on August 21st, what would be the best time, if possible, that I could see the eclipse? Oh. Um, like, can you, can you even see it from Michigan? Oh, absolutely you can. Uh, the, the In fact, you're going to have – you can look this up, by the way. If you go into Google – in fact, I'll do it right now. Well, I got you on the phone real quick. Appreciate it. Roland's going to try to do it without glasses. I can almost guarantee that. The um, so I uh, I'm not. I was thinking about that myself. <laughs> Bro, where are you that. from? Uh, originally Kentucky. Oh, okay, but I I live up in uh, I live up near uh, kind of near Chicago, outside Chicago. Oh, so, yeah, you're not far away from me then. I'm out. I'm well. I'm I'm further south. You're Midwest. Michigan. I am so, yep. it's going to yep. happen pretty quick. So, down the road. Sorry about that. What state are you in again? You're in, Mich- you're in Michigan? Uh, Michigan, close to Mich- Detroit, yeah. Ann so, Arbor. you're looking, I mean, okay, it's going to it's gonna start kicking in about between 9 and 10 Pacific time. And Michigan's on East Coast, right? Oh, okay. It's not sent- is it is yeah, Michigan? Yeah, Okay, so that's uh, yep. 11, 12, 1 o'clock your time that it's going to start. Right. So start watching it about then because it's going to be moving pretty uh, fast. And gotcha. then and you're going to be in the, let me see, 90%, mm-hmm. 80%. Are you in the, I'm sorry, are you on the north tip of Michigan or the southern part? Southern. Okay, so you're going to be west. like, you're going to be in the 80 percentile range. So you're still going to see it. It's still okay, going to be cool. a, it's still going to be a, between a 0.8 and a 0.9 magnitude. <clears throat> so it's going to be almost a total eclipse. But again, check it out when it's going to be, hopefully the weather will be clear for you. Remember, it's going to be a uh, Monday, Monday morning. Yep. So and, yeah, uh, but you're, another, you're going to be in hey. great shape. The whole country is going to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, one more thing. Um, for some reason, uh, I can't get Truth Frequency Radio in to, like, to come into my phone. It cuts in and out. And I know there's a number I can call. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want the phone listen. number to just to just listen? Yeah, I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the please. phone number to listen only, guys, if you want to call in and just listen through your phone and not use the call-in show, is going to be 641-793-7117. All right. All right. Or 219-867-530999. Okay. Long distance, long, long distance rates may apply. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hey, man. You have a good All right, night. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.
All right, let's keep them going. This one's going to be from, I think, Texas. Let's find out. Texas, 254 area code. You're on with Strange World and rolling ready. We still got five minutes till the break. What do you got? What's going on? What's up, Mark? <laughs> well, I got I got a guest on tonight, so that's kind of fun. Although he is kind of a redneck. So what uh, what's what's going on with you? What can I do for you? Let's shake you it. have a redneck on? Have you not been listening to the show? Or did you just call in? I just got on. I just got on. <laughs> so you haven't uh, listened to anything? Well, when, well, no, I just, I've heard the past two callers. Oh, okay. Well, what, what, what's your you general know, question? I'm be- definitely not from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> really? You didn't go to Beverly Hills High School? No. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy that called in, I guarantee you, he does not know hardship. You go to Beverly Hills High School. I know. I know hardship. I grew up on a peanut farm, hoeing peanuts, and home was homeschooled, so I'm hardship. Wow, homeschooled peanut farmer. I don't even know how to respond to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, what can I? What can hey, I do for you? I, we got. We got. We got. I got. And by the way, the three other callers that are stacked up in the queue. Well, two callers. Oh. Uh, okay. No, it's all right. Well, Those people have to quick. say you're going to be. You know the, the whole. Last, you're the last call before the break, so go. What do you got? You know the whole, uh, what do they call it, the urethra, urethra, whatever, where the shadow gets smaller? I don't think it's the urethra. <laughs> I uh, just say it. But, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> well, we're going to call it that for now. Okay, that's so the, the urethra shadow <laughs> is going to be doing what now? What's the question about it? Why does the shadow get smaller? I have no idea how you take a 2,000 mile actually, wide diameter object and make it into a 70 mile shadow. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, because you, what? you know, you know, when you're a kid, you get this, the flashlight close to your hand and it's huge and you move it further away, but it never gets smaller than your actual hand ever. That's true. The average person, I challenge anybody to try to make a microscopic shadow from any part of your body. And I know Roland might want it to chime in. It will never be smaller shadow yeah. than your hand. Yeah. I agree. Now, I can tell you right now. Hold on a second. <laughs> I can tell you right now that certain times of year when you go outside, certain parts of your anatomy are smaller. If it's Who am I talking outside. to right now? That's Roland. This is Roland. Ah, so okay, I'm that's the guess. It will leave a it will leave a smaller shadow. What happens? Should the sun be shrinking the moon? <laughs> really? Oh yeah, it's evaporating. Like, like, apparently, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, like you know, you know, like when you okay, hold on, like when you throw a wool sweater in the dryer. When you throw a wool sweater in the dryer, when it comes out, it's a lot smaller because you've had it on too high heat. Well, the sun's hitting the moon that direct. For that, even that little bit of time, the moon might shrink real quick until the sun gets away from it. And then the moisture, it, like the moon picks up the moisture being like a sponge and it's right back to the same size. That's why they don't want you to look at it. Well, I'm just saying it's not what they're saying. I know exactly what you're saying, I think. But you're saying something. <laughs> okay, look, you got, you got one minute until the break. So what do you got? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, man, I have something bang, else bang, bang, to bang. ask you. Do it. Pressure on the spot. Don't choke. Don't choke. It's a rookie mistake, uh, and you hate to see it. I'm not choking. I just can't well, remember no because I have. You remember I told you I'm the 51st date girl. 51st date girl? Yeah, you know, where I can't remember nothing, and my husband has to tell me everything every morning. <laughs> Oh, 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 51st. I'm sorry. I thought you said 51st state, not 51st dates. Really, sir? You have short term memory issues? I do too. I thought, I, thought, I thought she was originally from Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's what I thought that was too. 51st state, bro. I don't even remember that. Oh, and anyway, no, we're going to break. You, 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 you see, you choked. Well, sorry. I may just have to call you back. She missed All the right. Layup, man. Try to call us back. You okay? She missed the layup. Three, two, one. She missed the layup. All right. Love you. Shout out to my hubby and my son and my mother in law because they all flatter at their side. All righty. <laughs> See ya. Love you, mean it anyway. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Receiver circuits to CRM distributors. What's cooking on the fretboard? Nothing. I tell you what's gonna do. 
Welcome back to Strange World and interesting that Major Kong was screaming there because Chip Baker, longtime listener and sometimes caller, wrote in during that. And he goes, hey, did you know that Peter Sellers was to play Major Kong? He actually fell out of the B-52, broke his ankle, and he had to move to a different role, uh, which was given to, I believe that was Slim Pickens. So awesome. Very cool. And let's do Flat Earth News real quick. I know there's a bunch of calls on there, and there's people that we were talking to that are just hanging on the line, which is fine. Or maybe they want to talk to, again, we don't know. Uh, all I'm doing is going to YouTube and typing in Flat Earth, and we're setting the filters to this week and seeing if there's anything in there that really catches our eye. Uh, first thing is that the numbers, are the metrics just keep going up and up. We have jumped from 17.9 million to 18.3 million. In a very short amount of time, which means we're just crushing Lady Gaga right now. Have not, probably won't catch President Donald Trump anytime soon, but that's just because he's the most talked about president in the history of presidents. And why wouldn't he be? He's a reality television star. Uh, let's see if there's any videos. Uh, D Marble is doing a whole bunch of great stuff. Uh, check his stuff out. D period Marble. Uh, Flat Earth. Asshole. Apologizing. Because he did a video and got copyright. Well, no, it was terms of service struck for commenting on the, uh, the the person that got run over with the car at the rally. And let's see, celebrate. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. There's just so many things. I mean, I could go into the mainstream news. Ford Magazine talked about us. There's an interesting story about flat earth women, how a bunch of housewives are apparently getting sucked into the whole flat earth concept which I thought was very, very interesting. But other than that, I, seriously, just you, you want to know what's going on? I'm, I'm not even going to cover Flat Earth News right now. There's just too much in there, too much content, tons and tons and tons and tons of comment, content. Just type in Flat Earth, set the filter to this week, this month. But if you want to see the actual numbers, when you type in Flat Earth, set the filter to upload date, not view count, not relevance, not rating, upload date, you'll get the real numbers. Because if you said, said generically, it comes in at 5.2 million, which is still really, really high, you know, as high as NASA. But if you sort by upload date, that's the real numbers. Anyway, our guest tonight is Roland Reddy. That's R-O-L-A-N space R-E-D-D-Y. He is a redneck rocket scientist, and we're taking calls. You can talk to me, or you can talk to Roland. It really depends. How you doing, Roland? You still there? Uh, Roland? Yep. <laughs> Roland's still there. I'm here, man. Right can on. Can you hear me? I can I'm hear you. Am I there? Uh, yep, I'm yep. There. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm here. Oh, yep. Uh, right. You're there. I All got right. you. Ooh, okay. Look out. All right. <laughs> we should make that a thing. I'm here. That's really good. Uh, okay, well, let's pick up a, a call because I know there's a couple people here we've already done. Let's pick up Shreveport, Louisiana. At least that's the phone number. We don't know these people actually live there. I mean, I've got a Boulder, Colorado number, but I'm actually up in Seattle and let was me, in Canada. Let me tell you, I get calls from all over. People tell me that they are uh, that they are uh, from the government, and that I've been uh, there's a warrant out for my arrest for my taxes, and that every single one of them sounds like a robot. <laughs> nice you not got that call yet no i haven't i get a lot of emails from it's princes scam, and barons that want to want to send me money and i'm thinking of really jumping on some of those oh man yeah those are great yeah yeah these people got they you know and they obviously don't know english when they're tapping this in for the robot I, to talk it I, so <laughs> it comes out like hello this is the irs we have a warrant out for your arrest. Go see your local police and tell them nothing. But call us at this number. I'm oh, like, what? weird. Peanut Gallery, actually. About? I have not gotten a call like that, but Peanut Gallery says he has. Interesting. Yep. All right. Anyway, let's, let's pick up a call I real quick. Time. Well, that's really but weird. No, from Shreveport. Uh, Shre Shreveport, Louisiana. Here we go. Uh, Shreveport, you there? Three one eight. Hey, how y'all doing? I, I Good. Totally... Oh, What's sorry. going on? <laughs> hey, how you doing, Roland? 
Good, man. What's happening? Oh, nothing much. Uh, I just want to start out by saying um, that the previous caller from California, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, some people have came out and, and admitted that, that that video, you know, it wasn't, it's, it's not proof of hitting anything. I don't think, uh, in, in reality, I think we would need to see about 20 of those doing that same thing. There you I, go. I wouldn't just put my faith. I wouldn't just put my faith in one video. Yep. Um, but to get that out the way, uh, Roland, uh, I guess you know you, the whole time you've been on here talking, you've just been talking about how much black you're getting, how much how much you know hate you're getting right now. Uh, I just want to let you know that a lot of uh, probably a lot of that you're, that you're getting is probably not even real people. It's probably a bot account. But anyway. Uh, I think that a what another another. Did you know what a bot account is? A bot, a robot. Not really. Oh, a bot it's, like a robot. Yeah, like a robot, like a fake, like a okay. like an automated automated like, account. Like, like the like the like the IRS calls I get. Yeah, like like much like the IRS calls you get. Yes. Yep. Gotcha. I got okay. it. Okay. I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep uh, keep going. Well, Shreveport. I, mean, I appreciate that, man. Um, I believe that that there are some people in this community that are really passionate about this. Um, I think when a lot of people saw that video of you, they didn't know the backstory, you know, kind of how you got to explain now, uh, if that's true, if you're telling the truth, cause you know, you're making it sound like your intentions weren't bad. Uh, so I think, I think people yeah. that are passionate about it, they felt like that you, you were playing a redneck act to be funny. But, uh, well, they, well, they are. They are trying. He is. He is trying to shoot a pilot for a uh, for a television show. So, hey, whatever, Absolutely. whatever it takes to get there. Honest to God, I'm. Je- I am jealous. I don't know what I would have done had I gone face to face with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I do not know what I have done. Well, I can tell you uh, this. Uh, he's a he's a pretty big dude. Yeah, but he lost his gym membership a long I wasn't time ago. Of him. I want, I'm not afraid of them. Oh, good. Oh, you got to, yeah, I ain't afraid of nobody. All right. Well, obviously, you're not afraid of dying. That's afraid, for sure. Just, no. <laughs> no. I believe we all got a number. When when it comes up, you you know, whether or not you like it, you're standing in line. There you go. You know, there you go. Whether you like it or not, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, so be ready. No right. pun intended. Don't be me. Well, well, Roland, um, uh, thank you for talking to me, man. And uh, n- no hard feelings. I think I think people didn't know the backstory. And uh, if if you if you do like the community, I I would suggest really only trusting the people that show up at meetups. Uh huh. So because uh, yeah. that uh, man, the internet the internet is fake, man. It is so fake. There's just a lot of there's just a lot of. It's, not real people. It's account. tough to know just who to trust in the internet. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you're, oh. so what you're saying is, so so basically what you're saying is, is that the, that the people that are on YouTube only and won't show their face are the folks that uh, are fake about this whole topic thing? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's how I feel. Like I, they I feel like... Public, it, they hide I, behind a camera. I feel like if you'll if you'll show up to a meetup, you'll meet people, you'll you'll let people get to see you, and and because I mean when you when you're around people and you're talking about this, it, it's on another level. And um, why are you why are you a flat earther? Why do you why why do you believe why do you believe the earth is flat? That's why I gotta know. I got because this is this is interesting to me. I just because I've I've seen. Uh, you know, I got a message from Mark saying, hey, look at this. I'm like, all right. And, uh, you know, you come on the show. I'm like, yeah, uh, all right. So I watched it, and I'm like, okay, hold on a second. This is this is interesting right here, uh, the whole Hollywood thing. I ain't going to lie. That one got my attention because I've worked in Hollywood before. So I'm going, <clears throat> this is a, uh, this right here is uh, whew. I mean, it's a lot different doing stunts and then, 
thinking about how they never made a movie about the moon landing. That got that does get my attention. I started talking to the producers of the show, and next thing you know, they're like, "Shut up! I don't want to hear. It. I don't need to hear that. That's crazy. Uh, you're nuts. Don't don't talk about it." And the shutdown was uh, kind of the same way that I got from the people on my video uh, of the pilot that we're shooting. You know, the teaser. So found it very interesting that on both sides people go uh cuckoo for cocoa puffs man listen roland i'm i'm gonna tell you this right here it's it, it's something that you, you don't convert nobody you just you just kind of let them know about there's some information out there it's something that you yourself have to go and you you visualize it it's an accumulation of evidence um there's no one proof that i can just tell you um, it, I like it's that accumulation, man. I like that you get you send people on their own journey. Everybody has to take their own path. Yeah. The destination yeah. is always the same, but everybody picks their own path. I like that. I'm stealing because that, and I will copyright that. Ladder <laughs> opens the door. To I mean, it's gonna blow your mind. It really will. I agree. Hey, uh, any any. Any any closing remarks? Because unfortunately, the, apparently Roland's very popular. The the phone lines won't stop at this point. So, any uh, any any shout outs? Uh, shout out to the Louderses and Louisiana. Right on, man. Sounds great. All right, hey, Roland, stay- no hard no hard feelings. Peace. <laughs> All right, man. Peace, man. Yep. You have a good one. Peace and shit. Wasn't Peace wasn't that Greece, what, man? Wasn't that a nice guy? That's like the opposite of a troll. And he's like saying, it's okay, you know? Yeah, man. Hey, by the well, way, he also... I'm, I'm... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh go I, ahead. I, I, I was just going to say that, uh, that he was saying that don't trust anybody except for the people that are at meetups. And while that happened, a particular someone just messaged me and said, oh, yeah, by the way, reminder, Thursday, the 24th of August, the Michigan meetup. It's also going to be Flat Earth Bowling, 7 p.m. in Battle Creek, Michigan, hosted by another, uh, um, excuse me, pardon me, by none other than Patricia Steer. For details, check her channel or mine, or mine, or, oh yeah, uh, it's on mine, Mark Sargent. Uh, for the promo on YouTube or email her directly, that's M I S S S T E E R E at gmail.com. That's Miss Steer at gmail.com. Uh, you ready for another call, Roland? Absolutely. All right, let's pick up. This is, this is easy. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, let's pick up Twin Cities. <laughs> Peanut Gallery says flat or sphere bowling. Well, it'd be tough because mm-hmm. if it was flat bowling, then it'd be like bowling frisbee. Okay, uh, this is six one two area code. You're on live with Strange <laughs> World. You got me. You got Roland ready, and you got a few minutes. What do you got? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that. No, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Wes. Oh, uh, good stuff. Lord. It's Wes. Ah, ah. Had to pop in. Anyhow, <laughs> just wondering if you had <laughs> heard. This, how are you doing, Roland? This is actually a question for both of you. Um, I had, uh, I've, been, I've been keeping up with, uh, I, I think Mark knows him, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob uh, Israel. Um, I watch him periodically. And he had mentioned on his uh, video today about a certain fault line that uh, actually follows the path of the moon's eclipse that's going to happen. Yeah, it's the. And I was uh, the, wondering if you could say anything about it, or yeah, maybe have an explanation. Or I don't. Know. Uh, it's the Madrid fault line, and I would expect the uh, the extra magnetic forces created by the unified field with the moon and the sun eclipse to disrupt that fault line and plunge the middle part of the Mississippi River into the abyss. No, I have no idea. But it is but it is the Madrid wow, fault line. Man, that's... Yeah, I know. There you go. Woo! I was just gonna, I was just going to say, wow, that was a really intelligent answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've gotten that one before. The um the Madrid fault line Man. is near Nashville. I only know this because I have a friend in Nashville, and uh, she was concerned. And I heard I heard people screaming and everything just now. I was like, "What's <laughs> going on here?" <laughs> I know well, that won't happen until Monday. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The eclipse is like, actually. Man, I, gonna... hope, I hope I'm in an airplane. <laughs> I'm like, I hope I'm in an airplane when that happens. 
there was a there was a famous uh, uh, prophet seer, you know, like a, um, his name was Gordon Michael Scallion. And he talked about how the Madrid fault system was eventually going to cave and uh, the country was literally going to be split in half at the Mississippi and you know, the Great Lakes were going to empty out in the Gulf of Mexico and it was going to be something out of the movie 2012. But but yeah, the eclipse is going to cross. I got news the- for you. What? Uh, the Mississippi does split the country in half. What? <laughs> Thanks, Roland. Well, this is going the other way. <laughs> the fault line is going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. yeah, but, but it could the United States. <laughs> it, it could open it up. I don't know, but it's interesting though that you would mention that. Yeah, it's the Madrid fault system near Nashville, and uh, it's really out, outside of the, like San Andreas. I think it's the biggest fault system in in the country. Although, you know, if you want to worry about something, yeah. I'd go after the um, the super volcano in Yosemite. But all that stuff. Remember, the system isn't going to let. I don't think anything anything huge catastrophe wise is going to happen in those regards. I think it's going to be a little, little more relaxed than that. We got to get past the eclipse first, though. That's on Monday. As everybody, very nice. Uh, let's see, peanut gallery. I'm waiting for his. Uh, all right, I know all right. The quote from the peanut gallery for us is one thing that I one thing I know that I know nothing. This is the source of my wisdom, and that is from Socrates. Nice. And, uh, you know what? I've got one for him. Those who do not move do not notice their chains. Oh. That's for all the people that are blind to what's going on. Good. I got one for all of you. <clears throat> what do you got, Roland? Chew on tinfoil. Chew on tinfoil and wish you hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just made that up. Chew on tinfoil and wish Literally, you hadn't. You, you I did. Just, seriously, you but made I, I, no, I didn't make it up just now. No, I'm just saying, be happy where you are because the second you start chewing ten four, you wish you would have hadn't done it. You wish you would have stayed where you're at work. Boom. Good, good point. And I'll, I'll throw I'll throw in one just because you guys have all thrown in one. Uh, mine is things are never so bad that they can't get worse. So as bad as you think they are, they could also be on fire. There you go. Nice. I agree. All right. Uh, Wes. All right. Get the hell out of here, and uh, please do hesitate to call. All right? <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. All right. That was Wes from Flat Earth News. So we just have to tolerate that. And let's see. Here's a tip for the guests. Never do jumping jacks in a room full of ceiling fans. Awesome. Good one there, peanut calorie. All right. Let's pick up <laughs> Let's pick up one. We still got time for two more, I think, before the break. Let's pick up one from Alhambra, California. That's six two six area code and three two one. We're going going back back to Cali Cali. <laughs> I don't think so. And by the way, that's from if you know the song. That's anyway. Uh, hey, California six two six there. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, what's uh, what's going on? You're on, you're is... on with uh, Roland and me. What's happening? Yeah, I have no idea who Roland is. But this is nobody Josh, does the Uber driver from California. Okay. What's up, dude? We had the meetup. How'd it go? It actually came out pretty cool. Right on. The, thank God, because California was late to the game. I mean, everybody else had done meetups, and California was waiting. And I'm sorry, which one was yours? You because there were two. There was one at Rancho Cucamonga, and the other at that was Santa- us. That was you, and the other one was at Santa Monica. So how how did it go out at Rancho yeah. Cucamonga? Uh, actually, it turned out pretty cool. Really? Uh, like we didn't know like how many people were going to show up. Uh, and I don't know. We saw I had like twenty people there. Wow, awesome! And was it fun to be in a room uh, full of full of flat earthers? Yes. It was really cool talking to everyone and finding out what led them to Flat Earth. Like, it was really cool. Right on. That's cool. And yeah, it, the, the energy levels are always we, high. Go ahead. Another thing, I'm starting to notice, like, a common theme mm-hmm. uh, that goes together with Flat Earth. Like, dude, there's no way it's Flat Earth and then 
there's no way to discount God. There's no way. Mm. It's it doesn't true. have an accident. I, flat, in flat Earth atheists, there are not a lot of them. That's for sure. That's one of the biggest questions I see on Facebook all the time, actually. In, in these discussion groups, is yeah. globe believers asking whether or not uh, there's any like atheist flat earthers and yeah those feeds are completely like empty dude <laughs> yeah it's a tall it's a tall order I, I don't know how you could do it to be honest uh, if you can if you can figure out how you can be an atheist and a flat earther at the same time I'd like to know I'd really like to know the model and, and what you're thinking there because I don't think it's possible so but that's awesome so yeah are you, are I don't guys, think it is either um, so I, my only recommendation for meetups is don't do it, it's fine. I know everyone gets super, super excited, but try not to meet once a week because you, you're going to get burned out. Uh, the, if, the, the, if Colorado is an example of that, the Flat Earth um, Fort Collins group, I mean, they met so much. It's like it, it was like, yeah, I can go. You know, you kind of take it or leave it. So if you space it out, you kind of keep the enthusiasm going as much as much as you want to be with those people. There's only it's kind of like watching videos. You know, yeah, you, you watch the videos, you know, for several weeks at a time or maybe even a month at a time. But even I can't watch, you know, all the time because I'll, I would literally go insane, I think. But anyway, did you hear anything about the um, uh, the Santa Monica group? Did you hear, hear anyone catch any word from that group? You know what? Uh, I was actually able to join something online with them. And yeah. then uh, now I'm getting like updates on when they're having their meetups so i'm thinking about stopping by one day that they have one and seeing what's going on with those guys yeah right on right on that's cool and i'm glad you know new york okay. is, is is uh gonna be doing theirs here pretty soon and by the way new york i know that um 845 uh, use the use the backup number for whatever reason you're not getting through i don't know why um uh 845 use this number use 213 Two three 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 nine nine eight. That's two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That should get you straight into the station. I got to ask a question. Yeah, what is it, Roland? Is there a flat Earth single site? Just out of, <laughs> not that I want it. Just, just curious. There are. There, there are. I think there is. Yeah, yeah, there are flat Earth single sites. It's not a joke. Um, I can't remember the name of it though. The, the, just type in. <laughs> wow, like, man. I know, right? <laughs> There are some crazy girls, but it, it really makes a difference because if you're trying to do something that's not a flutter, singles, let's type it in. Let's see what happens. Uh, flatter singles meetup wow. public group is on Facebook, but I know there's, there's no, I know there's a real one. Um, earth is flat on connecting singles.com flat earth friends.com. So there are people out there that are mandating you believe in flat earth or you can't date them. Oh, dude, I, I, I will never date anyone that, that doesn't believe in this again. I can't. How, how can you? It, it, I, I, there's no way. There's no way. It completely clashes. Yeah. Because you, you, it's a Every, rift. Yeah. You, you, I, 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 man, my head's shaking. I'm like, what? I know. I know. Wow. Anyway, I want to I want to take no, one more call. Good, for, it's whatever. That's cool. I, I want to take one more call for the before the break. California, thank you for the meetup update, and we will talk soon, okay? All right, man. All right. Talk to you later, man. All right. Okay, let's pick up. uh, Let's pick up Middletown, New York. Here we go. Eight four five area code. You got two and a half minutes. Go. Hey, what's up, Mark? It's Mark. Hey, Mark. And you're going to be doing the (laughs) New York New York meetup. So good segue. Uh, Meet meet up Saturday. uh, County Nyack, New York. Uh, We're going to meet in front of Dave and Buster's. Um, a few people call, uh, email me, but they're not going to be able to make it. I don't know. Show. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. So if, if they want to con- uh, contact like you for details, how do they get a hold sure. of you? Yes. Uh, that's Zulu101, Z-U-L-U-O-N-E-E-0-1 at yahoo.com. And then I'll, uh, like Perfect. I said, I'll be there at noon, at noon and I mean, you can't miss me. I'm, Giant brown man, so <laughs> giant brown. You'll be able to find me. Nice, and that's and yeah. I'm sorry, that's the that's... New York Tri-State Flat Earth Meetup, and that is going to be name the name yeah. the city, name the city again. 
Nyack, New York. It's N-Y-A-C-K. right across the uh, Tappan Zee Bridge. Yes, correct. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's real easy to get to right off the highway. No problem. Cool. So, and it'll be outside see, of Dave and Buster's. I made a trailer for yeah, it. It's on my noon. channel. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup New York, and you'll get the trailer for it. Yeah. And I will not give out Mark's awesome. phone number just in case because, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> too funny too other funny. than that how you doing you got like, like 20 right. seconds that, till the music starts uh not bad not bad hanging in there uh i like your your buddy there roddy it's He's pretty cool roddy um <laughs> I, I, i'm roddy uh i was gonna say oh my god I'm rolling ready that sorry my, roddy my i'm an idiot my, my favorite wrestler my favorite wrestler was roddy 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 all right cool roddy, cool roddy good thank you all right, Thank man. You for my ass. You're <laughs> I got a quick quote. Breathe go, go in, quick. breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Forget this, and attaining enlightenment will be the least of your problems. Nice, good, good segue. And there's the music. And what, 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 what's the last thing a redneck says before he dies? What? Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Love you guys. No hype, no, 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 no fear. We are T F R Frequency Radio. Yeah. Okay, the song's over. Song's <laughs> over. <laughs> no, no, song's over. Seriously, there's no, there's no, there's no music left. No music left. Thank you, and welcome back to Strange World. Yeah. Where the truth is often stranger in fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and this is part four for the last chance to talk to our very special guest, Roland Reddy. That's R O L A N space R E D D Y. You can check out his YouTube channel, Roland Reddy. I've got some stuff on my channel as well. And the phone calls just keep on piling in. Let's, um, Let's grab. Oh, wait. In fact, somebody, because Roland asked about the singles thing, I just got a note from somebody that says Effie Love. There's an app for your phone called Effie Love. No joke. And so, why are you on it? Wow. Uh, all right. Anyway, I'm not sorry. on it. No, no. The P- Patricia's on it. Anyway. All right. Oh. Uh, the phone lines actually are maxed out at this point. So let's just pr- start grabbing them. Uh, let's grab Canada since they are probably in a pretty late t- time zone. This is 780 area code. All right, 780. What do you got? Hey, Mark. It's Robbie Davidson. Celebrate Truth. How's it going? Hey, it's going pretty good. I know you. You're the guy that's hosting the hey, uh, I, conference I heard down. That whole, uh, yeah, I heard Roland on. I was going to say, man, he should, if he's really interested in looking into all this stuff, he should definitely check out the conference. We're having the conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, Roland. So if you're interested, come on by. We'd love to. You're have the you guy. You you're the questions. guy. You're, I know who you are now because you're the guy that I sent the clip to because I we looked up the whole thing about the Flat Earth Conference that day we met Neil. And that's why I sent you that clip when they let me, man. So. I just want to tell you, uh, uh, first of all, thanks, I guess. But at the same time, um, you, you got some mean people over there. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, lots of people you know, have different uh, views and different ways of looking at things. But uh, anyways, it's encouraging. We kind of call about the, uh, the conference. Uh, you also, I think on the show, had mentioned about a uh, flat earth singles and uh, i know actually a few people that are actually developing websites as we speak so there's actually a a big need for it and i think that there's going to be you know there's the app right now if you love but there's also some other websites that i know that are being developed because i think one of them wants to uh, sponsor the conference in the fall so i thought i'd just put that out if you're you know that's great question as well that's great is it is there one being developed and i'm sure this is inevitable and i hate to say i i hate to say that this is actually a thing now flat earth christian singles is that actually going to be a thing? 
I would imagine in time, I mean, again, there's going to get to a certain point. Like, for example, I tell my story all the time about my wife, but when I kind of came into this, you know, after a couple of weeks, I'm like, gulp, I got to go tell my wife, I think the earth is flat, right? So I was yeah. kind of worried, but when I uh, approached her, she's just like, you know what, <laughs> that's what the Bible says, then I believe it. And I had uh, just a wonderful response. But I would say that, yeah, it is important. There's a lot of people out there that have a spouse, and unfortunately, they're struggling with it. They're looking for ways to bring it up, or like, how do I talk to my spouse? And you know, so again, it will be something that I think will be important, especially for people that are dating, you know, to kind of get that on the table first and say, by the way, just let you know, you might, you might think I'm crazy, but I just want to let you know, this is where I stand and see where it is rather than waiting, you know, a few years and then trying to bring it up. I mean, that's going to be really scary. So I think it's a really good thing to meet someone already believing the lies of the world and you're already on the same page. I mean, what a great way to start a relationship. Yep. Yep. Wholeheartedly. I agree with everything you just said there. Well, you guys, Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, great, Any, great uh, show. Big, uh, big supporter. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, and and glad, yeah. I'm 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 looking forward. You know, I'm going to be doing the conference as well, and real excited. In fact, I'm even showing up a couple days early, just to hang out with people, uh, whoever comes early, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, well, it's great. We've got so amazing so things this, in store this, for the conference. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Roland. What is this? Is this co- conference? Is this conference free to the public or something? Or how do you? I mean. Is it no, 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 like no, no. Y'all no. are coming together and you're having a real like big thing, right? But no, no, it's a full. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. You know, yeah, about the conference. It's the same one that uh, you know. I mean, as far as uh, the conference itself in Raleigh, North Carolina, and there's just going to be hundreds of people. It's going to be absolutely incredible. But I'll tell you, you know, I've uh, been talking okay. to the media. And I was talking with uh, BuzzFeed today, and uh, there's Vice News, and there's networks, and I mean, there's going to be a lot of coverage on it. So, I mean, you could ask the questions from both sides and kind of figure out. But a lot of people are going to be coming, kind of scratching their head, asking questions, and I think it's going to be a real wonderful time this fall. So, anyways, if you're interested, just go to fe2017.com. Um, you know, the conference is actually sold out, but we have live streaming and that sort of thing. But uh, if there's a way that we can... Uh, get you uh, there, Roland, it, it would be great to have you. Hopefully it would help you, you know, on the production. Of, uh, uh, well, yeah, well, here's the thing. I, I wanted to, you're the fellow that I sent the clip to, right? Yeah, was, uh, my uh, my, uh, my YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're that guy. Okay, good. I wanted to say I'm sorry. Uh, I know that there are people that uh, I read some bad things, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry if I caused you any strife. I wasn't trying to tell you I was a flat earther. My whole thing was I wanted you to understand that we talked to Neil, and we, we mentioned that to him, and he made a couple comments you know, about it, which I'll, I'll be happy to share that with you guys later when I can. But he did. he talked about you guys candidly. So all I can tell you is sorry that uh, if I caused you any heat or grief, I know I received it, and I know you. Uh, I know that there was some people that said you know, bad things know there, and they said heard, about Mister Sergeant too. Have you have you heard anything? Like, do you know? Like, when you had a chance to talk to him, did he know anything about the big conference? Because a couple of people have told me that that he's got wind of it. He knows about the conference. Some people are joking around saying that you know he's going to watch watch Neil deGrasse show up, and I, I don't think he's going to show up. But I was just wondering, do you know if uh, he knows about it or anything? I'm sure at this point he must know. About I, I asked. Uh, I. I, I, I I flat out asked him about it. I said, would you ever go crash something like that? And I, I can't tell you what he said yet. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. Crazy. Well, well, if he shows up, hopefully. Uh, I did ask him that. I said, would you much. ever go to something like that? Because I, well, I didn't know. I didn't really know a whole lot about him anyway. You know what I mean? Hmm. So when I, when I asked him that, you know, it was like, he was just kind of like, uh, <laughs> I guess he basically just, you know, he was honest. You could tell he was being honest about it. That he was just like, hmm. you know, hey, wow. uh, people can believe what they want, you know. But bottom line is, I don't know if he's going to come crash it or not, but that'd be kind of cool. I'd like to see you guys, y'all talk to this guy because it seems to me he knows his stuff, fellas. That's all I, I, well, I don't know. It, I don't know if Neil I, you know, I, Yeah. I don't know if Neil will I, actually I don't show know. up, but I do know that there might be there might be some uh, interesting guests that might uh, be showing up at the conference. I've uh, had a couple uh, messages and different things, so there could be some pretty big surprises. So hopefully, uh, cool. you know, yeah, you, guys, you guys know one awesome thing. I, you know what I looked at today? I saw something today about this whole thing because I was like, "What?" Because I I used to watch uh, every now and then I'd watch Joe Rogan, uh, and he used to say some things about the moon landing that I agree with. I don't believe. I don't believe everything we've been told about the moon. I don't. I don't believe it. Okay. Can't. Mm-hmm. Nope. No way. 
All right. So I'm, that's one thing we can't agree on is that there's something fishy going on up there uh, or whatever. Uh, the other thing is, is that when I Googled it today, when we were watching that, uh, Joe Rogan is uh, arguing with one of his buddies about this thing. And it'd be kind of funny to invite one of those guys to your thing to see what they have to say. Cause I don't know the guy's name, but he's a, he's a wrestler or something. But oh, you need AJ, to get a hold of that AJ guy Styles. and have, I don't, no, I don't know which one it is. Yeah. I can't remember, but there he's good. I think I heard with something that, about uh, that. Yeah. Rogan. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, I mean, here's two buddies that are arguing about it. Why not? And, you know, I, I don't hold nothing against nobody looking at whatever, but man, when you start telling me I work for the CIA, uh, you know, you start questioning my reality. Uh, I don't really care, but it's kind of funny that, that you know, I got people you know, trying to track me down, called my employer, the whole work. So it's, 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 it's pretty, it's actually kind of scary. You just got to oh, be careful, yeah, kind you of know, you got to be careful what you say. Yeah, some people are skeptical, and they, I, I think they kind of look at you as uh, maybe making flat Earth look bad. But I mean, I, you know, you, you're not even a flat Earther, are you? Like, you don't believe it at all at this point, do you? Or you not no, yet. I don't believe that. I don't, why would I? I don't. Why would I? Hey, I'd but yeah, but, but here, let me ask you, Roland, 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 Roland. Let me just ask you yeah. a question because you brought up a really interesting point. You brought up the fact that you don't really believe that they landed on the moon. So all I'm going to ask you is, that in your investigation, figure out why in the world would they lie about something like that. There must be something more going on, and I guess that will help you maybe on your journey. Because I think you're on the well, right track. Wasn't with the whole because of the thing, and I think it's important. Well, wasn't it trying to make the Russians look stupid? Yeah. Oh no! Tell you what, it's it it's so we, much greater. I mean, you wouldn't. It, it it's it's going to take way too much more time than we have for this show. But thank you, thank you. That's true. That's true. Anyways, anyways, you're on the right track with the moon landing. Let me. Just I'll watch. You, I'll, you send you, me. You 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 send. You send me something to look at, I'll look at it, and I ain't scared. Because I'll tell you right now, the, the guys that are producing the show today, I, I, I brought up a couple things about Hollywood. And why, why have they never brought made a movie about uh, the uh, moon, moon landing? How no. come? Yeah, how come, how come they, they've never made a movie about the moon landing? And, I, and, and, well, I got that from your videos. Oh, I got I'll, that from yours, Mark, because that's well, thank what I was you. watching. Thank and I thought that's a, that's a good that's a good point because, you know, I've done stunts for years, and, you know, you know, work my butt off to get a union card to, to be doing what I do and driving and flipping cars and doing whatever. But yeah. I, I look back at it and I go, you know, that, no, I've I've never known anybody that's ever done a moon stunt, so to speak. Right. Are you so, still doing? Are you going to do stunts on the new show? Like, are you still doing stunts, Roland, or what? Yeah, we got some stuff planned. We we just shot some stuff, and uh, you know, biggest thing is when we went to talk to Neil, we were asking him about you know what is the most flammable substance in space because we're you know part of the show is if we can get this thing off the ground, all right. If you can get a pilot and you get somebody interested, whether it's uh, you know, or the networks, whether it's TLC, History, Discovery, whoever. Uh, bottom line is if you can get that and you can get the right budget, you know. Uh, you know, the guys from Mythbusters, they, they get on, uh, get a lot of help from the government and stuff like that. We've seen them do military tests and shooting guns and that kind of stuff. So I'd like to be able to do that. And I'd like to be the first person to blow myself up in space. That's it. And parachute back. Like, uh, you know, just come on down, you know, but nice. that's why we want, that's why we want to talk to Neil. We asked Neil the hard question. What can you blow yourself up with in space? What substance? And what he told us is you can't, you can't. And you know you have to you have to see the you have to see the final product to understand why. Because he gave right. a good ex- explanation, but but I have a feeling that I that he was going to tell me the same answer that I thought from the beginning, and that is huh. you can't. All right, so I've got go. guys. Easy. I've got to take a few. But more that calls doesn't mean the that Earth's flat. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go. Sorry for keeping so long, but anyway, good, oh, no, uh, okay. good chat with you, Mark. Keep up the great work, and uh, Thank you. we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. All right, man. Have a good one. Well, thanks. Okay. Thanks again, man. Sorry about that. Oh no, no worries at all. Okay, let's jump right into six six one. Looks like it could be California. <clears throat> six six one area code. You're on with Strange World and Rolling Ready. What do you got? Do no. We care? Yeah, you do. As a matter of fact, wait. <laughs> that means- you you're on. Are you there? I heard her for like a few seconds and now she's gone. Roland, are you still there? Yes. I think maybe she went out because I was chewing on tinfoil. 
And 661, like area code. 661, you're still there. You're there. You're back. 661, six, six, yes. That's you. And I'm not in cast. Hello? Hello? Go, go ahead. I can I can hear please, you. Please can pop, you hear please, us? Please deposit. I can, please deposit. No. Cents. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't carry dimes anymore. Um, the reason I'm calling, Mark, is because I have heard about and do you know about an app called a Theodolite? I have heard of this. Well, there's two brothers. One brother is a pilot in Colorado, mm -hmm. and the other brother is you know, somewhere towards the ocean. Mm -hmm. And they were speaking with each other on the phone, and it was like a three, two, one picture. Right. And then they did the field light thing and figured out that the moon, they were taking pictures of the moon mm -hmm. and they figured out that it was about 300 miles away. Right. I, I happen to know quite a bit about this story because a certain high profile flat earther named Rob Skiba did a video on it oh. and he, he yes. did a vi video covering the whole thing where the theodolite app if you point it at the moon and you can sync up with somebody else far away you can or you can sync up with anything you can you can figure out what where an object is and it said <laughs> that the moon was only about 300 miles away which was amazing <laughs> that is hilarious i know right and so are you Mark. so you're saying so what you're saying um, is what you're saying is the moon is close enough that we could have a base on it uh, well, you're assuming we can. You, you're assuming we can land on it. And then you're digging digging into Richard Hoagland territory, which. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, California. You, you call. Uh, actually, I'm calling from not far from where Ann Arbor, Michigan is. Oh. That young man that called in earlier. Um. Actually, I'm in um, Prescott, Michigan. Oh, all right. Sorry, I'm just going. I'm just going off anything. on where the phone was initially purchased. So. I know that's because I'm I'm a white girl from Detroit that ended up in California for 30 years. Oh wow! And now I'm a fifth grader back in Michigan, like and I'm oh I, I'm I'm going on 70. But you you're, never know it. Oh no, you never would, and the people it drives people crazy. I love it because <laughs> people don't. <laughs> you said you got to be nice. Yeah, you got to be nice all the you time. Be nice. if we just ask. We, yeah, like my puppy. But I <laughs> see Roland Reddy. Roland Reddy. I I had no. Idea. Mark Sergeant, you caused me to make so many doodles, and tonight you've got. Oh, I don't know. You're up to four pages now. You're just doodling in, um, like on just notepads, just making all sorts of doodles. Oh yeah, because I oh, I have to find my spectacles now. Do you do spectacles? Well, the fact that you actually use like... the word spectacles. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Yes, do, but do, I you hear save, do you save? Do you save any of these doodles? Oh my God! That's the only thing I have. I have nothing more. I have no furniture. Everything I have fits in my pickup truck, and here I am in Michigan. That is one of the weirdest stories well, I've heard all make week. Sure, look, I, I, I got, I got a question. What? Do, do your doodles come out? Do your, do your doodles come out different if you're not wearing your spectacles? Well, actually, I don't have half the spectacles because I always break them. Um, oh, my doodles. My doodles are always different. You should you should In physically fact, was... mail me some of these. I will show them on the air. <laughs> I will show them on a show if you mail them to me. Well, see, Miss, I even put Miss Steer's Gmail down because you were so busy tonight. I would never get through, and I just know that she's a person who will answer her email. You don't. What? <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I actually read. I have dedicated email shows where I read emails yeah, from right, people. Right. Like I know. Yeah, that, that I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read uh, probably a thousand or more emails on air and put them on my YouTube or on my YouTube channel. I know. I, I'm really telling you a fallacy because you even give your telephone number. I do. My real telephone number. It's true. Yeah. Anyway, what's and, up? What, I don't know who Pete, I don't know who Pete Santelli is. And um then I oh I know what I wanted to say because Roland, there was a man that Jared must have had on the other night and I liked what he said. It wasn't really a question. He says I just how do you curve a, a level? Like a bubble level? How do you uh I'm How do you curve a level? That. I've actually, I've, I've ran a five foot level over with the truck <laughs> and it has a bow to it, but it still works as a level. Because <laughs> the bow went the other way. Mark Sargent, you my life to change, actually. Uh, what? Um, you have caused my life to change. I don't know if that's a the good thing. thing I, okay. Oh, it's, well, the last thing my son said to me, and I, I don't know if you have kids, when he kind of turns your, well, he's a great, he has his own kids. My grandkids are in the service, you know? Mm -hmm. And he just cocked his head and said, Mama Mo, he said, you're deluded. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and so that's how like I left like California. Kind of, well, it's, you know, you make me, you look like I need a drink. <laughs> I know that country I song. I know that country I, song. So when he I, called you deluded. I, when I, I, I've seen the t-shirt. <laughs> there you go. When when, uh, when he called you deluded, did you just throw some doodles at him? Did that clear that up? Well, actually, he knows my doodles from when he was in high school making a computer in the dining room table. Oh, okay. Okay, because I'm going yeah, back to the seventies. I love you. <laughs> What's the question? Well, I have no idea. Why, why don't you take your why, why don't you take your doodles and like take your best doodles and take them into Staples and put them on those canvas things and sell them? There you go. You know what? That would be my pot money. Your pot? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't this is say that. Be the coolest grandma. I know. The coolest grandma call I've ever heard. Exactly. This is the well, coolest. If you, Go ahead. Well, wow. you know, what kind I know. Of, what kind I have wait, to apologize. Wait, what kind of, what kind of cookies do you make? I'm sorry. What? What kind of cookies do you bake? Oh, I don't bake cookies, honey. I don't know how to cook brownies. Oh, mm. all right. <laughs> I am. I am. Checking. No. I was, All right. I love anyway, we're, we, I got to try to get in one okay. more call. She before said this. Money. I had to have some kind of cookies to make. Sorry, man. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. All right. <laughs> make them. I can. Thanks, hey, Mark. Bye. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye. I'll talk. To, and she hung up. <laughs> that was crazy, man. <laughs> Normally, I would end on a call like that. Wow. Um, you know what? let's crazy, just man. tell you what, let's, wow. you, let's, let's Hello. end, let's end on that one. And then you and I are just going to wrap for a little bit. We got, we got a few minutes till the end of this. So what's next for, right. uh, what, for, first off, plug whatever you want. So rolling ready. How do people get a hold of you? What's the best uh, way to get a hold of you? Go to the website. I got an email. My email is rolling ready at gmail.com. That's uh, R-O-L-A-N. Anything I'm willing to, I, like R-E-D-D-Y at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to, uh, you know, everybody that's been uh, cool. Uh, kind of weird how some of the folks have been kind of asking me, whatever. Uh, long story short, uh, basically, I will look at whatever you want to send me. Uh, I'll share it if I dig it. If I don't, don't get mad at me. I don't have a lot of time. I do work a regular job. Uh, we do film. Uh, every now and then here, we got most of the stuff in the can, as they say, uh, stunts are pretty much done. And then, uh, we're doing, uh, basically just a couple things. We got to do some stand up, and pretty much they're going to edit the rest of it. And it's done, man. Right so on. They have to have it done by the, by the, by, by the last day of summer. Cause they said it was going to be out this summer. So all I know is it's supposed to be 
little over 40 some minutes for the pilot and uh you know it's like tv ready basically so if they do take it it goes straight to and they got commercial break spots the whole works man so awesome. yeah it'll be fun Awesome. So that red, sounds red like a lot of fun. Redneck rocket scientist. That's the redneck thing. rocket scientist. I'm, a lot of fun, man. I'm encouraged. I, and again, I know you're not a flat earther, but I have hope because all of us, everybody in the flat earth community, started out sort of like you, only with less stunts and broken bones and just general redneckiness. Redneckiness? Whatever. Right. Right. So and caps. And, I got caps and, and, and caps, got... right? Caps and wh- I don't know. Watching Dukes of Hazard and listening to uh, a whole bunch of of Jeff Foxworthy and whatever else mm. rednecks do. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, what, what the the funny thing is, I grew up uh, in the late seventies and eighties. All right, yeah. and uh, so I lived I lived through the disco and then kind of going into the eighties stuff. So I like all kinds of music because back in the day. You know, you'd hear Kenny Rogers on the radio and then come right after him via Commodores, you know, and then, then later on down the road, you got, you know, uh, country to disco to, you know, rock and roll. So my whole thing is music tells a story and you can, you know, grasp the straws on, on reality. But the bottom line is if you don't question your reality and you don't question why am I here, you may never find out until it's too late. And that's, that's my whole thing. So you, I live dangerously. I've lived a crazy life, but at the same time, I ain't afraid to ask questions. I ain't afraid to answer questions, uh, but I don't need people stalking me. That's crazy. I hear you. I hear you. And anyone that's out there, look, don't, don't say bad things about Roland. You don't know him yet. And I know people fear what they don't understand, but you don't know this guy yet. And I, I'd say give him a chance. And look, you've trusted me this far. So why not keep trusting me? Because well, I, I, like I said, I ain't afraid. I hey, I, I wasn't afraid to come on here and talk to you, man to man. Yeah. I didn't know what I, what I was getting into. Yeah. You know, I know you're trying to sell me this this idea, but it is what it is. I mean, I don't really I, have I to. My whole life that I, I don't well, really have to say it. Like, go ahead, go ahead. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is, you got like a, you got like a you got a way of talking to people, you know, you, I mean, you break it down kind of easy, but at the same time, you know, my whole life I've been told it's a dumbest thing for someone to believe in. So right. naturally I, my defense mechanism goes up. I hear someone say, I'm a flat earth. I'm like, Whoa, look out. You know, that's not right. the sharpest cookie in the box. Right. So hey, um, you got to like if 20, you look, if you look, 20 seconds. What do you got? Okay. Hit, hit me. Uh, well, I'm just gonna say thank, thanks, man. I just I didn't know what I was getting into tonight, and I just I really enjoyed myself. Fantastic! I really it was great. Myself. It was great I having you, it, man. That's I know I I loved having you, and you know what? Well, I'm planning on I'm planning on having you on again. Let's let's do this soon, okay? I'll do it. I ain't scared. <laughs> Neither am I. And with that, guys, hey, there you same go. flat time, same flat channel. Come on on back. You hear? Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? (laughs) I had to make a new one. What are you doing? (laughs) 